Hey Southview online community, you're getting ready to watch one of our prophetic night sermon messages and we're so excited that you're with us. The, the thing that I love about the Lord, one of the many things in the Holy Spirit is, it's like you, know, you ever take a water balloon and you throw it, right? And it hits something and the water just doesn't splash on the person that it, that it hit. That's what I was seeing in the Spirit. It's like if I throw, if I throw some Holy Spirit at Gloria, guess what? It's like being at Kings Island, doing the, the, the log ride. Everybody behind them gets splashed too. Everybody gets a little bit of the Holy Spirit. There's been many times, and my wife gives an excellent testimony of a time that someone close to her was getting a word in a prophetic meeting, um, and she was like, wow, I think that's for me, right? Am I telling it right? And, and it was, because... Later on, that word came to pass for her. So it's awesome when you're operating in the prophetic and God highlights somebody. And you get to give them that word and you get to see their countenance change and their spirit, you know, be lifted up. But, like I said, there's times to where you get a word and it fits three or four people behind you or beside you. So just be, be open-minded. Listen, the Lord doesn't operate the way we think he operates. <laughs> We are not smart enough to figure out what God is doing. He does things in so many different ways, and he can, we can be focused on one thing, and honestly, it'd be the least important thing that God is doing, and we can't even recognize the real movement in our own lives or whatever the case may be. So would you all agree with me that God is amazing? And would you agree with me that the Holy Spirit's the best gift you ever got? right? Besides Jesus giving his life for us, right? Holy Spirit is amazing. He's my best dude. He's my ride or die guy. He, he keeps me out of trouble. He gives me great direction and makes me miss things that would, you know, like divert, don't do that because <laughs> it wouldn't be good for me. So I jokingly say all the time that I, I love the commercial uh, Mayhem, uh, the insurance guy, I mean, that's my favorite commercial, dude. I will, I will belly laugh like nobody's business. And, but the Holy Spirit told me one day, because, I mean, believe it or not, the Holy Spirit has an amazing sense of humor. We serve a God that's funny. And, and if you've ever, if you're close to God and you see some of the things that God does to you, you cannot help but laugh. And the Holy Spirit told me one day after that commercial, because like, that just gets me. I love that commercial. He said, he said I'm, I'm your uh, GPS minus the annoying voice. And I'm like, sweet. That's pretty amazing. Because he does. If you really think about what the Holy Spirit does, he tells you when to go left. He tells you when to go right. He tells you when to stand still. He tells you when to move forward. And he tells you when to just be still and know that, that I'm God. And it's, it, God is just amazing. He's just amazing. So how many of you is your first time here? Quite a few. Come on. Come on. Thank you for coming. You know, it's been funny. It's been funny. Uh, we've been doing this for two years. And it's been, I mean, it's just been amazing. I can't tell you how much that we've learned. When God called us into this, we're like, okay, we know how to hear God's voice. But we, I mean, we don't really know that much about the prophetic. And really, even what our true identity was. But thank God for a prophet. And he trained us and put us in the right direction according to God's word. And, and you know, the awesome part about it is we're learning right along with you all. Um, so tonight, we're going to do a message, teaching, and it's, it's the prophetic depth. It's going deeper in the gift of, of prophecy. Because if you realize anything that we do in life, most people want to be the best at it, Right? I've been a cop for 23 years. I catch drug smugglers on the interstates. I want to be the best at it. I don't want anybody to get by me because that stuff kills people. And I want to be the guy that gets all of it. Some people say I may be arrogant. I'm like, no, I just want to catch, catch the stuff so it doesn't kill people. But I want to be the best. So even in this gift, I want to be so seasoned, and I want to honor God so much that he gives me more, yeah. that he stretches me, to the point that I feel like I'm going to break because I want it all. If I go eat somewhere, my wife will tell you this, if I go sit down at a buffet, sit tight because we're going to be there a while. I'm getting my 1095 
and everybody else's, <laughs> right? And that's the way that I feel about the Holy Spirit, about God. I want to know all of it. I want to walk in the cool of the night holding my Lord's hand and him trust me with the secrets of heaven. And I feel like that these nights are, are they're the people that are coming. We're on the same page. You're either here because you're curious about the prophetic you're here because you're like, I don't know what that is, but let's just go check it out. Or you're already operating in the gift and you want to go deeper. You want to learn more. Or you're here wanting to receive a word, <laughs> which I hope you get. Somebody will get it. Um, but I do want to give this out to you. You do not need me to give you a word. You don't need it. Now, listen, I'll do it. I'm, I'll be as obedient as God calls me to be. But you don't need me to give you a word. The word says that prophecy is for everyone, for everyone. Everyone in this room can hear God's voice, and you can prophesy over somebody. So it's one of those things to where, you know, we might work ourselves out of a job because if we get you all convinced that, you know what, I can hear from God and I can do that, then you won't need me to teach you anymore, right? But just think about it. If five people in this room right now developed their gift in the prophetic and started speaking God's word, I'm telling you, man, it would change the world. It changed the world. It absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, would change the world. So there's, you know, however many people's in here, 50, 60, 70, whatever, let's just all change the world together, amen? And let's do it for the kingdom, amen? So let's talk about going deeper in our prophetic gifts. In Hebrews 5.14, switched on me. It says, but solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. You know, if a doctor or a nurse goes through all the training and they get somebody in their ER or in their their room, the more experience they have treating someone, the better they get at it. They recognize the symptoms. They know what to prescribe. If they do surgery, they've been there, done that. The great thing about the gifts of the Holy Spirit is the more you activate in them, the better you become at distinguishing what you're supposed to do. So if you want to really have strong discernment and to be able to judge through the Holy Spirit what is good and what is evil, the simplest way I can tell you to do that is read the Word, have a relationship with the Lord, activate your gifts, and practice. You do that. God is going to give you what you need to be able to discern good from evil. But the word says it is solid food is for the mature. And even though I think that we're all still babies in Christ, God has given us, we're we're growing up, right? We're learning, but God has given us a mature food to eat for this season and where we're at. So you cannot distinguish good and evil with your natural senses. You can't. Now, we're talking about supernatural, right? It's easy to, I mean, how many of you watch TV? I mean, come on now. And how many of you understand we're in the middle of a political nightmare, right? So if you want to break it down to brass tacks, they are trying to portray good versus evil, right? But it's not God telling us who the good and who the evil is. It's the natural. It's the media. It's the people in a place that tells you, This is what they think, all right? Now, here's the difference. You learn to discern between the two by using your supernatural senses, right? So in anything that we do, God calls us to pray about it, to ask the Holy Spirit what we should do, and through our supernatural senses, God gives us discernment on what's good and what's evil. That's pretty awesome, right? God is is always at our side and our front and behind us, giving us what we need in order to live a supernatural life. So the disclaimer is tonight, less natural, more supernatural. We got to depend on the Lord. We are not of this world. We are only here for a very small moment in time, and we have to shift to learn that we need to live more supernatural and not as much natural. Amen? Amen? So as humans, we have five natural senses, hearing, sight, touch, and, oh, that's four. Where's the other one? Taste, that's it. Hearing, sight, taste, touch, and smell. We use those every day, right? I use 
the taste one a lot more than most, I believe, because I love to eat. But did you realize we also have, we also utilize five spiritual senses, right? So Jesus said, he who has ears, let him hear. So we hear in our ears naturally, right? To hear someone speaking to you or the sound of a bird or whatever the case may be. But God also uses our ears to hear supernaturally. You can hear God, the Holy Spirit, in an audible voice. You can hear the Holy Spirit in a supernatural feeling or a revelation. Many people, because God is amazing and he does, never does the same thing twice, everybody's different, but everybody hears differently. But if we use our supernatural senses, we're going to be in connection with God. Paul writes in Ephesians 1.18, The eyes of your understanding be enlightened. Now, is he talking about our natural eyes? No, he's talking about our supernatural sight, right? Visions, dreams, um, even the point of driving. I love Tennessee. I I love Tennessee. God really knew what he was doing when he brought me from Indiana, brought my family from Indiana, Tennessee. Fall is like heaven. The the colors of the trees, it looks like the best painting. But like where I work, I can drive down the road and the interstate and beside me will be a field of, of wildflowers. Right? I don't know. I'm a cop, but I have a sensitive side. <laughs> but it's like I look at that, and 15 years ago, I'd have been like, well, I don't, what's, what is that? Now I'm like, good Lord, man. God, you, are, you do things that just blow my mind. Like in the middle of nowhere, there is a bunch of beautiful wildflowers in the most you know, beautiful setting that you can see. The deeper you get with, in your relationship with Jesus, the more you start seeing Jesus. And everything that's around you, you see Jesus. That's using your supernatural eyes. Amen? Amen. This tells us that we have vision and hearing that are referred to in the word as being supernatural in nature. If you let that sink in and it really starts to click, you start understanding how supernatural we are. Like, yes, this is a natural body. You're hearing my natural voice, but what is inside me is supernatural. If you take just a moment and think about it, all of heaven, the Holy Spirit, the whole everything, it, it's right here. It's, it, it lives inside of us, and we have access to the entire kingdom of heaven and everything it has to offer. Now, that can't rest in your, in your natural mind in, in a small area. It's supernatural. It's way beyond the way that we understand or the way we think in our human form. Amen? And I love this one. In 1 Samuel, the boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. He ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lie down. So here you have the Lord speaking, and he's hearing an audible voice of the Lord, and he's like, Oh, it must be must be my, you know, my mentor. And he's running back and forth. I think he did it like three times, if I'm not mistaken. And each time he's like, yo, bro, I'm not yelling at you. Go to bed. And then finally, he understood that it was the Lord calling him. That is an audible voice that you're hearing through your natural ears, but it's your supernatural side that's understanding it. That's a pretty complex God. The spiritual impulses can feel just as real as the natural impulses. It sounded so real to Samuel, the audible voice, that he actually thought Eli was calling him. I mean, God can get your attention. He can get it. Hey, listen, anybody been in here besides me that's been to the woodshed, the spiritual woodshed a couple of times? I mean, like, that is one of the most, like, amazing feelings, but, like, you're like, man, like, I just got taken to the woodshed. Daddy was not happy because I'm not paying attention. It's pretty awesome. So we know that Eli wasn't calling Samuel in an audible voice. Samuel heard God calling with spiritual ears. He's, one of the things that I, I took out of this was if you, like for me, if I'm in worship and or I'm sleeping or I'm really tired, the, I hear the Lord so clearly. And it's because I kick the nonsense out of the way that I, you know, during the day that I think is important or that gets my distractions going. And in that moment in time, let me tell you, God's voice is really loud. 
It really is, and it's very distinct. He doesn't do like I do and mispronounce words. Like, you understand what he's saying, but you have to learn to be still and learn how to understand and hear his voice in whatever form it comes in. So let me give you five ways to go deeper. Number one is your ability. Now, what do you think that means? Does it mean you have to be super strong in certain areas of your life? No, it's, it's your ability, which means you prophesy according to your measure of faith. But you also practice your gift of prophecy as you get stronger. All right? So one of the things that, that I've learned through other uh, teachings is, like, I have a very strong, I have very strong faith in healing and prophecy. But I'm really weak in patience. <laughs> yes. Lord, help me. Right? But it's like, I want things to happen now. Like, I mean, you are God, and you said this. What do I got to wait five years for? Like, let's do this thing. I'm not getting any younger, right? So my, my prophetic faith is really high because I've had people be like, aren't you nervous when you get up there? And I'm like, yeah, to teach. Well, what about the prophetic portion? I'm like, no, it's easy because it ain't me. I just yield to the Holy Spirit. He highlights. He says, I'm obedient. It's the most simplistic thing that we'll do tonight because it's not me. It's God. So if we can get our faith to grow in the prophetic, God gives you more, you hear more, you become more bold, you start seeing God do more, right? Very simple, yet for a lot of people, very hard to do, right? Much like all things, you must start small and develop your skill. I played baseball in high school and in college, loved it. Um, but, you know, I was a pitcher, left-handed, dominant. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but in order to learn how to pitch, you had to learn mechanics. You had to learn, you know, they'd keep us up like this for hours upon a time to teach balance. And then you would learn your arm control, where you put your hands on the seams of a baseball for a curveball, for a slider, blah, 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 blah. All right? I know I just lost half of you, but that's okay. But what I'm getting at is you put this together with this and then this and this, and you put it in the total package. Now you're able to accomplish what you set out to do, but it takes practice, right? Yes, and repetition. Every day I would go to practice, three and four hours, and every day I would work on my craft. And then eventually I got to start at the college level. I became at least decent enough in my craft in order to be able to play. With the prophetic and with God, you have repetition, you master. I don't necessarily know if we ever, we don't master it because God comes through us, but you become very well versed in your craft. It's not nerve-wracking to speak the word of God over somebody when it's edifying and it's comforting and it's loving because that's what prophecy is. That's what God does through speaking through people. Amen? So number two, you've got a recognition through fellowship. As Christians, as human beings, how many of you experience the, um, the quarantine, right? How many of us are honest enough to say that absolutely love our families, but quarantine about killed us? <laughs> Here's the thing that I learned very, I, I'm very social. I love people. And when I was locked down, it, it affected me because I didn't have fellowship with my church family. I didn't have fellowship with my friends. I did with my wife and kids, which is the only thing that got me through it, and, of course, the Lord. But fellowship to the Lord is very, very important because if you have a good family, a very tight family, it's fellowship. You spend Thanksgiving together, Christmas, blah, blah, blah. If you birthdays with God... Most people, some people, I'll say most, some people make the, the, the mistake of it being about religion and not about relationship. Relationship is fellowship. God wants to spend time with his kids, and he wants you to hear his voice, and he wants you to be obedient. Parents, do you want your kids to be obedient? Yes. God wants the same thing, right? That's why I've been to the woodshed several times. 
So Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. He didn't say, my lambs know my voice. <laughs> so let's, sheep, right? Adults. Lambs. Babies, right? Goes back to the mature food, right? So he didn't say, my lambs know my voice. In order to know his voice, you have to be a full-grown sheep. The sheep get familiar with the shepherd's voice by constantly fellowshipping with him. Obviously, I am not a sheep herder, right? But I do have read enough in the Bible and have seen enough documentaries to where this shepherd stays with these sheep 24-7. I mean, like David, right? I mean, he, he killed lions and bears, oh my, <laughs> right, with his hands because it was his job to protect the sheep the flock. He spent every moment. So he knew the difference between every sheep that he had. I mean, this was Larry. This was Betty, you know, and he was like, oh, Betty's gone. I got to go find her, you know, but he, and Jesus knows it. He knows us. He knows us by our names. The sheep get familiar, obviously, by the constant fellowshipping with him, the, sh the herders, the same way as we do with our Lord. God speaks in different ways, but when you know the shepherd's voice, you recognize it in whichever form it comes. For me, I can hear the audible voice. There's times to where the Holy Spirit will just rest on me, and then I start doing the whole, you know, Kleenex thing uh, because I feel the love of the Father so strongly. There's times where God will highlight somebody to me, and that love will hit me, and it takes me a few minutes to get my bearings together to where I can speak over them. Um, I get words of knowledge to where if someone, you know, has something going on with sickness or maybe depression or whatever, and I also can feel that on me. Like, I'll get depression hit me like a ton of bricks until I'm obedient, and I speak God's word, and we break it off of that person, and then it leaves and never comes back. That's how God uses me. I can feel it, I can see it, and I can hear it. Not all at once normally, right? Because he comes in different ways. It's whatever he needs to get accomplished is the way that he'll use it also with the way you're willing to receive it. You got to be willing to receive it. You got to be able to re willing to receive God in any way that he comes. Amen? Number three, exercises. There are different methods or exercises to developing your prophetic gifting. You can do exercises to help develop your prophetic gifting. It's not just like you're sitting on the couch one day and God plugs it in the back of your head and all of a sudden you just start getting a download. You will get a download, but you have to exercise your gift in order to become better at it for God to trust you with more, to give you more words, to give you a deeper revelation. The first thing you need to do is you need to shut down your natural senses. This was probably the hardest thing for me. Um, yeah, in, in some ways, I have a really good friend that says that I just disconnect. And we make fun of him because he says that. But in a lot of ways, it's, it's, it's now being revealed to me, and I'm going to have to apologize to him because I give him a hard time, that, that literally that's what God's calling us to do. Disconnect from the world. Disconnect or shut down from your natural senses. Take control of your own thoughts. Listen, I'm going to give you some very strong wisdom that it took, the, it took me, because I'm bullheaded for years to be able to understand it. This is your battlefield. This right here. This is where the devil operates. This is where he twists and manipulates and distracts. I was so hard on myself for years that the Lord finally said, he said, son, I only pay attention from here down because it's my heart, it's my spirit that God recognizes. He knows that I love him. Up here, it is a wild, wild west show. <laughs> and, it, and it, I mean, but you have to learn to train your brain, basically. Like Gloria Paget, one of my good friends, she says, I always pray for a kingdom mindset. And for years, I've been praying for a kingdom mindset. And it's happening. It's just a process. 
where it used to things would come in and it would stick for days. You know, get that shut down and gone. It was then it was you know days, then it was hours, then it was minutes, and then I can feel it before it even gets there, and it's like, no, nope, we're not doing that. Get out, and I just declare peace. So we can win this. We can win this battle that goes on in our minds. Amen. Fasting and praying. Fasting is hard for me because it's like I'm not fasting food. I'm not doing it. And I'm like, Lord's like, you need to fast. And I'm like, okay, I'll fast breakfast. And he's like, you don't ever eat breakfast. And I'm like, but I'm still fasting. And then I'll be like, okay, well, I'll eat breakfast and fast lunch. Yeah, and he's like, just silence. And I'm like, okay, dude, what do you want me to do? And then I have to do what I got to do, right? Fasting for me is hard. I love to pray. I pray. I talk to God every day, all day. He's my dude. But fasting, mm, not so much. I'm like, can I fast TV? Can I fast going to work? I mean, I can do that. I'll fast for two or three weeks. <laughs> and then finally, journaling. I used to journal a lot, and the Lord's, I've had some people speak over me like, hey, God wants you to start journaling again, <clears throat> and don't ask me if I have. Um, but journaling is, is something, I've, I found a book that I journaled in a while back, it's been years, and I was reading some of it, and I'm like, oh, wow, like that's come to pass already, and it really lifted my spirits. It's like, man, that's amazing. So anything I, I suggest, and I'm, I'm going to make a, a covenant with you all, that I'm going to start journaling again. <clears throat> I'm going to journal the words that are given to me um, or whatever or what I see because God can use it in a ton of different ways. To go back and, you know, 10 years ago or 15 years ago and read a prophetic word that Angela and I got, and I'm like, yeah, like we're doing that. I mean, ministry has been spoken over us for 15 years, and we're like, we're doing it. Oh, by the way, praise God, we just got approved for our 501c3. We are official. With the federal government, we are 180 Ministries slash Inc. is a, a full-time ministry, praise God. Yeah, super exciting. Okay, back. Number four, I had to just throw that out there because, I, I mean, it like when they sent me my letter, I was like, yes. So number four, obedience. This is another one that's tough. Our minds are, now listen to this. Our minds are blocked by what we hear or what we can hear. Does that make sense to you? Our ears serve as a filter, the same as our eyes. Can you have a blocked mind when it comes to hearing the voice of God? Yes. Get mad. And in the midst of your anger, I would say you're not going to hear the Lord's voice. I mean, at least for that moment in time. Now, I'll hear him afterwards, especially if I'm driving home or driving to work and there's some people who don't know how to drive. Like, I'll feel that come upon me and I'll have to rebuke it because, I mean, it does. I'm, I, I get upset with it. I'm like, seriously? 90, buy me in a fully marked police car and you didn't even see me? <laughs> but then I have to remember, it's like the Lord has spoken to me and said, that's my kid. And I'm like, you need to teach your kid how to drive. And he just starts laughing. He just starts laughing. I'll be like, Lord, that's a new car, and he didn't use his turn signal. And they'll be like, yeah, and you're, doing, and you're speeding right now. Oh, okay. But that's part of it. The distractions and what we allow our ears to hear can block the voice of the Holy Spirit. All right, that's something else that we have to continuously work on. And listen, I am telling you because I struggle with this. I let my mind runs wild. I mean, it, it's constantly on the go. So we have to learn to grow beyond our thoughts and our opinions. Let that sink in. We're a very opinionated people, and I'm guilty. All right, so, yes, especially on social media. We have to learn and grow beyond our thoughts and opinions in order for our minds not to be blocked. In order to go deeper and become more sensitive to the Holy Spirit, we need to make sure our hearts are willing to do whatever he says. Whatever he says. So what overcomes the mind? The heart. 
God puts it on your heart, do it. No matter what the mind says, no matter if it's like, man, that's awkward, or they're going to look at me like I got 14 eyes. Who cares? God said, do it. Get on it. Because if it's in your heart and it's from the Lord, it's always going to be right. Amen? In Acts 10, we read how Cornelius, through his giving and frequent prayer, touched the Lord in a great way. The Lord was like, he was so happy with Cornelius. He wanted to send Peter, we're all familiar with Peter, right? To bring the gospel. However, Peter did not want to go to the Gentiles. He did not want to go. He was like, I'm not going. Peter's reluctance to, to go kept him from hearing God's voice. We have to practice obedience. If God is putting something on your heart and you're refusing to go, you're going to stop what God has planned. It's just the way that it is. And God, trust me, God will put you in positions to where it is the most awkward thing on the face of the planet. But when you're obedient, it's the most rewarding thing you'll ever experience in your entire life. It's amazing. Don't argue or debate. Not only do you have to train yourself prophetically, but you have to train your character to do whatever God says. You have to be able to be obedient in the smallest things. The smallest things even matter to God. Start by being in a local church, tithing, and being baptized. Come on. Listen, we're talking Christianity 101. You can't operate in the gifts. You can't do the things that God's calling you to do if you're not serving in a local church. God is a God of order. Can I get an amen? And you got to tithe. The Bible says it. And I don't care who comes against me and says the Bible doesn't say that. No, all the money belongs to God. And you're supposed to give 10% of it back. End of discussion. And you need to be baptized. Baptized by water, baptized by fire. You know, Holy Spirit baptism. Both of them are crucially important. As you become more obedient, God will give you more input into your life prophetically. New wineskin. So often we argue with, the Lord, with what the Lord says. So when the Lord speaks in a prophetic word, you shouldn't try to figure it all out. We're not capable of understanding, okay? There's no need to ask someone else if they can relate to a word that you got from God. It's not their word. You do not have to be afraid of missing God and making a mistake as long as your motivation and heart is right. God honors the prophetic. God will watch over you when you prophesy. That's the God we serve. Your responsibility is to walk in a close relationship with him and do whatever he says. Because he's a good father. He's not going to lead you down the wrong path. Amen? Your heart being positioned with God, he will protect every move that you make. You cannot miss God if you love him. Can we just take the, take the mystery, take the weight off? If God is in it, it's going to be perfect. And you're going to reap some amazing things by being obedient. For those of you that haven't been here before, let me give one another. I've already said it a couple of times, but I was on a plane. Lady sitting beside me. God told me she had breast cancer, and he wanted me to pray for her. And I'm like, you're crazy. How am I, as a guy, going to prophesy and pray over a lady and tell her, say, hey, you know you got breast cancer? It was very awkward. But I told God, if you want me to do it, make it happen, as I was profusely sweating. And he did. She looked over and started talking to me like I was her grandson, whatever. And the words just came out of my mouth. I said, ma'am, do you know you have breast cancer? And it's right. And I didn't point to her. I pointed on myself. I said, yeah, it's right there. And she was like, oh, my God, how did you know? And I was like, the Lord told me. And it just came out, and I ended up praying for her, and we both got hit in those seats at 36,000 feet with the fire of God, and she got up when we landed and told the whole plane as I was trying to fit in that little space underneath the seat that she was healed of cancer. I never saw the lady again. It was one of the craziest experiences I ever had. A dude, I mean, in this day and age, you, that's not comfortable, right? But be, through obedience, being obedient, I believe to this day that woman is running around healed. Because why would he have put me through that 
and she would have done what she did, and we would have felt what we felt if God wasn't like, I'm going to heal this lady at 36,000 feet. Was it awkward? You bet it was. Was it amazing? You bet it was. Can I fit under that little spot under the seat? Almost. <laughs> Almost. Because trust me, I was giving it my best shot. Heavenly Father, I thank you for what you're doing in our lives. I thank you for the gift of prophecy. I thank you for the fact that it's for everybody. That it's not just for me. It's not just for my wife. It's for everyone. Everyone can hear your voice. And through obedience, change lives. So, Father, I just declare a double portion tonight over your children. That this seed from this teaching would birth in them and be like, I want to go deeper. I want to know you more, Jesus. I want a deeper relationship with you. And, Father, because of who you are, I know that you're going to honor that. You are going to honor that, and we're going to grow, and we're going to continue to grow, and we're going to continue to be used for the kingdom of God. And, Lord, let us not see with our natural eyes, hear with our natural ears, but let us focus on the supernatural, that we would see with our supernatural eyes. Father, the, the person that the world would say is the worst person on the face of the planet, I pray that we see them through your eyes and see what you see them that you love them and that you honor them, Father God. And let us speak your word. Let us change lives, Lord. Let's resurrect some spirit, some Holy Spirit up in your children. And Father God, I just declare this be sown in the name of Jesus. And the church said, amen.